Over the course of the last several days, I turned my faithful digital artist, Digital Voodoo, on to the Three Eye Atlas object to get some interesting and perhaps unique perspectives of what this thing might look like were it not a conventional comet. And this exercise is not as a result of my current illness or growing insanity. This is a very strange object. There are anomalies about this object that are not being reported by the mainstream scientific community because they so desperately want this thing to be an ordinary comet and just an example of typical objects that pass through our solar system all the time, even though this is different than anything else that we've ever seen pass through the solar system, and given its age, it's like likely to be different than anything we've ever observed passing through our solar system. Indeed, different than anything we've ever observed, period, because we've never seen anything like this up close, and we're going to get the opportunity to do that very soon. So what is it about this object that makes me so suspicious? What is it that we have discovered that the scientific community isn't telling us? Well, Rather than go on with any more of an introduction, I'm going to go ahead and roll all of this out to you and let you make your own decisions about the facts right now. Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts, and once again, welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. I'm just going to go ahead and quote extensively from an article entitled Preliminary Anomalies of 3i Atlas, once again by Avi Loeb, the only astronomer who seems willing to talk any differently about this object than everybody else who wants to stick exclusively to the NASA interpretation. Quote, on July 1st, 2025, a new interstellar object, 3i Atlas, was spotted at a distance of 4.5 times the Earth-Sun separation. At that distance, I immediately calculated that it was anomalously bright, implying an object with a diameter of 20 kilometers for the typical albedo of asteroids. A day later, I posted a note explaining that this size estimate makes little sense for an interstellar asteroid because the interstellar object one eye a muamua was 200 times smaller and based on the statistics of asteroids in the solar system we should have discovered a million objects of the scale of one eye a muamua before spotting one interstellar object that's 20 kilometers in diameter we know that 20 kilometer asteroids are rare because non-avian dinosaurs were killed by an asteroid half that size 66 million years ago whereas meter scale asteroids asteroids impact the Earth every year. On the 4th of July, I wrote a new paper about the size anomaly of 3i Atlas, posted it immediately on my website, and submitted it for publication in the journal Research Notes of the American Astronomical Society. In my paper, I explained that detecting a 20-kilometer asteroid in the inner solar system over the survey period of five years has a probability of 0.01% based on the total reservoir of interstellar asteroids. This strongly argues in favor of 3i Atlas being a comet whose brightness stems from a plume of gas and dust that reflects sunlight from a tens of kilometers region around a compact nucleus with a diameter smaller than a kilometer. But facts do not always comply with expectations. A week after the discovery of 3i Atlas, two preprints reported that its observed spectrum does not show the spectral fingerprints of atomic or molecular gas. Instead, the spectrum only shows evidence for reddening of reflected sunlight. Such reddening could be indicative of dust, or it might otherwise be related to the surface properties of 3i Atlas. For example, Kuiper Belt objects in the outer solar system are reddened when organics on their icy surface are exposed to ultraviolet light or cosmic rays for billions of years. This is caused by tolins, a wide variety of organic compounds formed by ultraviolet or cosmic ray irradiation of simple
simple carbon containing compounds such as carbon dioxide, methane, or ethane, often in combination with nitrogen or water. In this red surface interpretation, there is no plume of dust or gas around 3i Atlas, and the object has a diameter on the order of 20 kilometers. The mild elongation of the fuzz around 3i Atlas, which by the way, everybody is interpreting as being a cometary coma. But if it were a cometary coma, then there should be some gas mixed in with that dust, and yet there isn't. Anyway, the elongation of this fuzz in current images is along its direction of motion with an extent that is comparable to its speed, approximately 60 kilometers per second, times the exposure time of the telescopes used to obtain them, a few hundred seconds. So if 3i Atlas is not an asteroid based on the interstellar reservoir argument in my paper, nor a comet based on the lack of spectral fingerprints of carbon-based molecules around it, then what is it? And once again, nobody is mentioning these anomalies. You won't find it in Wikipedia because it's being edited out by the site moderators. Nobody is allowing this information to get out, even though this paper was peer-reviewed and published. As 3i Atlas gets closer to the sun, it will get brighter. If it is a solid object without a cometary plume of gas or dust around it, then its brightness will increase inversely with the square of the decreasing distance from the sun times the square of the distance from the Earth. Future data from the largest ground-based telescopes, including the Rubin Observatory, as well as the Hubble and Webb Space Telescopes will likely reveal its nature. And by the way, the Webb Space Telescope will finally be turned on this object on the 25th of July. The simplest hypothesis is that 3i Atlas is a comet and we are missing the spectral features of its gaseous coma because of its large distance from the Earth. However, in case future data will indicate the absence of a cometary tail, we will be faced with the tantalizing possibility that it did not inherit a random velocity in interstellar space, but instead was sent towards the inner solar system by design, being a member of a rare population of massive interstellar objects. I mentioned this possibility in the last sentence of my paper, but it was surgically removed by the editor of RNAAS before the paper was accepted for publication, along with data updates on July the 8th. As I noted in an essay posted on July 7th, the anomalous scenario is reminiscent of the science fiction novel Rendezvous with Rama, in which Arthur C. Clarke described the entry of a cylindrical 50 by 20 kilometer alien spaceship not far from the inferred size of 3i Atlas to the inner solar system. Interestingly, 3i Atlas will pass nearest to the Sun on October 29, 2025, when the Earth will be located on the opposite side of the Sun, making terrestrial observations of it difficult at that time. Under these circumstances, it would not be easy to search for the keys closest to the lamppost. A technological probe which is aware of observers eager to watch it from Earth might favor these circumstances. 3i Atlas is on a retrograde orbit within 5 degrees of the orbital plane of the Earth around the Sun, an exceptional coincidence with the probability of 0.001 or 0.1% for a random orientation of its orbital angular momentum vector from interstellar space. Needless to say, when the details of 3i Atlas were summarized on Wikipedia a few days after its discovery, the editors of that entry omitted any reference to anomalies of 3i Atlas. They learned about my paper from colleagues on July 4th, but responded that this paper must be published in a journal before referenced on Wikipedia. For context, the Wikipedia site for 3i Atlas included at that time only references to unreferred scientific announcements and news reports. In other words, they didn't have anything from published papers at all on Wikipedia and rejected Avi Loeb's publication 
again, because he's talking about unusual or anomalous things, in other words, aliens. This practice by the Wikipedia gatekeepers provides yet additional evidence for the thesis presented in a new paper that I posted with the psychologists Omar Eldadi and Gershon Tenenbaum on July 9th, explaining the psychological reasons for the suppression of paradigm-breaking evidence by the scientific community. By the way, a fascinating paper, and I have it linked in the description very interesting and once again it kind of adheres to my idea that this is not some sort of conspiracy this isn't the scientific community trying to hide the truth from us but rather the scientific community desperately clinging to the dominant paradigm the things that they insist are true about aliens about extraterrestrial technological objects that sort of thing and they will reject any facts that fly in the face of that paradigm. The size anomaly of 3i Atlas will be easily clarified by upcoming data. Science is better served by a discourse which is open-minded to anomalies because awareness of them motivates the collection of new data to resolve them. The effort of gatekeepers to hide anomalies and maintain traditional thinking will ultimately fail. Boy, I hope he's right about that. Placing Galileo Galilei in house arrest to suppress the dissemination of anomalies about the moons of Jupiter did not stop modern science, but only delayed it until the Vatican eventually admitted that Galileo was right. We deserve to stay ignorant if we support a closed-minded culture where gatekeepers deny the dissemination of information about anomalies that contradict prevailing paradigms. Let us instead maintain our childhood curiosity and seek evidence rather than pretend to be the adults in the room that know the answers in advance. Advance. Science does not need to feel like a lecture in a classroom summarizing past knowledge. It could be far more exciting if the teachers would be willing to learn something new. Now, there's something else I'd like to pass on to you folks in addition to the information in this article. It's about a Muamua rather than 3i Atlas, but the information that we've gathered about 3i Atlas reveals the artificial nature of a Muamua. What you're looking at right now is the orbital pattern of 3i Atlas throughout its history compared to the orbital pattern of our sun. The 3i Atlas orbital pattern is in orange, the sun is in blue, and as you can see, 3i Atlas wanders far beyond the galactic disk going in and out of the galactic plane. This is how we know that this object comes from what's called the thick disk of the galaxy, a region of space that contains far older stars than the region that our sun resides in. Now let's go ahead and compare the sun's movement with the movement of interstellar comet 2i Borisov. As you can see, their trajectories are very, very similar indeed. Both objects wanders somewhat outside the disk of the galaxy, but for the most part stay fairly close to the galactic plane because they come from a younger grouping of stars, indicating that 2i Borisov has a similar age to the age of our sun. Now, let's have a look at Amuamua's trajectory. As you can see, it barely wanders outside the galactic disk at all. It's an object that adheres to what's called the local standard of rest, remaining almost completely motionless when compared to the overall rotational speed of the galaxy and remaining extremely close to the galactic plane. As a matter of fact, the leftmost box in this diagram is over a period of five billion years. In five billion years, based on the trajectory that we observed with the Muamua, this object barely wandered away from the galactic disk at all. Once again, this suggests an object that would be extremely useful for navigational purposes, were it to be, for example, a navigational buoy of some kind. It would also be an excellent explorer because it remains very strictly at the galactic disk, which many other stars pass through on a regular basis. Stars, for example, like our own. 
And incidentally, although Avi Loeb finds it very unusual and unlikely that an interstellar object like 3i Atlas would end up plunging straight through the inner solar system as it is about to do, the odds of a Muamua possessing such unusual and useful characteristics at random and also at the same time passing so close to our Earth directly through the Goldilocks zone of our Sun, the odds of all of that happening by random chance are over 250,000 to 1. And these odds don't even include the very unlikely possibility that a random object would be so elongated and thin, either cigar-like or disc-shaped, would also rotate in a manner that bears a lot more similarity to an artificial object than a natural one, and then of course, a random object also accelerating out of the solar system with no visible means of propulsion. 3i Atlas is a bizarre object, in many ways just as strange as a Muamua, if for no other reason the fact that it's passing through our solar system at this very moment by, again, random chance, something this huge, something this bright, interstellar object different than any other we have ever seen and passing through the solar system only a few years after we saw a Muamua, that in itself makes it very strange. Adding all of its other strange characteristics means that in my opinion, we're going to have a very interesting year of watching this object and a very frustrating year as astronomers continue to reject any anomalies that we happen to observe. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, I would like to thank everybody for helping me achieve my funding goal for Australia. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. And as I've said many times in the past, the way to avoid any further fundraising on my part is to get us up to 1% of subscribers being Patreon supporters. If we were to do that, I would never have to fundraise again. If you're interested in in that and all of the exclusive videos and other benefits that come with Patreon membership. All the details are in the description. So until next time, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.